Welcome back to another episode of Cactus Quest. I'm your host, Hunter, and in today's episode, I've got a special guest with me. A botanist, an author, an explorer, and a cactus and agave and succulent grower, Greg Starr. Thanks for having us out. Sure thing, Hunter. Thanks for coming over. Absolutely. Uh, your spot has been one of the places it's a, a go-to for me every time I come out to Tucson and uh, yeah, buy plants from you, and we've gotten to get to know each other and kind of develop a little bit of a friendship here. And one of the things that we have in common is that we both grow plants from seed. Right. So right here in front of us, we're standing in one of your several hoop houses, and you've got a little box here with the bricks and the plastic. Can you tell tell me what you got going sure. on over here? Sure. So inside this box, I've got a heat mat here for the winter time, okay. so I can germinate stuff over the winter, and I'll put plastic over the top. Right. Uh, to help keep it in uh, a little bit of extra heat here. So in the winter time, I do cover these houses. Right now, I just took the plastic off this last weekend for the for the rest of the summer. Okay. So I take it off usually sometime in March, put it back on sometime in mid-November, late November, okay. just before Thanksgiving. So I cover it up, have the greenhouses covered up. I do not heat the greenhouses. Okay. So I do a double layer of plastic and I get about 10 degrees uh, the colder it gets, the more differential there is between outside and inside. And what are some of your colder winter temps here? So this last winter I hit 22 both in the nursery and I've got a little bit of citrus over there. Right. In both areas I hit 22. Other parts of the yard I hit about 24, 25. And in the hoop house in, sealed inside with double here, plastic? Inside here I was 32, 33. 32. Yeah. So still freezing. Yeah, still okay. freezing, but I don't have to heat. Everything's hardy at least to that temperature. Now, um, for myself and a lot of other, you know, smaller, maybe for folks that are growing in their apartment in New York or in Chicago or wherever, or right. like me in my garage and in my office, we have our stuff in bags. So little plastic bags yeah. to create the humidity. So for you, you're just <laughs> sealing this entire box right. with plastic to right. give it that so initial I, humidity. I put plastic on at night. Okay. I come out in the morning, I take the plastic off. So it opens From up. From get go. From the get-go, yeah. So in the morning, even be so it's just just to stop you real quick because I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Even before the seeds have germinated, yeah, I do open you wait it up. For them to pop. No, I open it up every day. Okay. Open it up in the morning, close it up at night. Interesting. Yeah. So then, are you watering then daily? So I'll I'll mist every day. Yeah, it depends if I'm trying to get them to germinate. Okay. So if I've just planted a batch of seed, then I come out and water every day. Gotcha. Yeah. And then I noticed. You got, is yeah, I've got plastic all the way around here because I noticed I was having some things like get trashed out inside of here. And I okay. was curious, that's why the bricks are up here too. I thought, well, I'll so keep, out, the... keep out crickets and grasshoppers and whatnot by doing this. Well, what was happening is they would work their way up inside of the plastic. Gotcha. There's just a little bit of a gap someplace in here, maybe at the bottom. Uh -huh. They'd creep in there and then they'd come in here and eat eat seedlings. And do you have this heated at all? I have bottom heat that I plug in at night and okay. I'm, I'm unplugged during the day. And then at what point, like, I'm kind of at a point right now with my seedlings that I've got in the garage where it's starting to heat up. The garage is <coughs> like almost like a, even more of a greenhouse because it's way hotter in there than it is outside. Right, right. So I'm kind of wondering at what point do I turn the heat mat off there? Because, you know, it's like... Do you, even, do you the have the heat mat, do you have it on all day? Well, it keeps it, I want it to be at least 80 degrees during the day. So if it, if, if it is not at least 80 degrees in there, then it kicks on. Okay. So but, it's on a thermostat? Yeah. Okay. And it's just, you know, I've got like a plug, you know, a little right, thermostat right. that sticks into the soil in right. one of the pots. Yeah. I think 80 is a little bit high, personally. Okay. I would I wouldn't go that high for soil temperature. Okay. But uh, I'd what keep it. What would you it, recommend? I'd probably soil? keep it at around 70. 70, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, is that at night, if I don't keep it at at least 80, uh -huh. when I come out in the morning and I check the temperature, uh -huh. it's never at 80. It's at like 60, 65. Okay, so if the thermostat's set at 80 and you're only getting it's all, it's, 60, it's, it's 65. It, it's only kicking out that much output. Yeah, okay, then you're fine at that. But I, I would not have soil temperature at, at 80 degrees. Okay. I think that's a little bit hot to germinate seed. And when we were when i first arrived i was asking you about a um dudleya that you had and you, right. you said something that i found to be a little bit curious you said that's really about the only one that i can grow so 
Um, one of the things that I have found is that a lot of people, myself included, will try to grow things and kill them. Right. And is there, do you think there might be something to be said for just grow what you can keep alive in your area? Because some things uh, require if, a bit more. If you're willing to, to try it. I mean, if you have a situation, I, I won't try it myself. If it's, if it's 115 degrees out here, I'm not gonna do anything to try and bring that temperature down. I don't seal the greenhouses and have uh, fans and pads and cooling and, and everything for the, the summertime. Yeah, I mean, if you just have <clears> a shade cloth, I imagine. Yeah, it's just open, not open really air. Airflow's not an issue. Right. Uh, real quick question about the shade cloth. I get asked this all the time. Right. People always wanna know what shade cloth are you using? Yeah, um, I use generally around 40, 45%. Okay. Have you noticed that you get scorching at, on hot days, even at 40%? Not really. No? And I think probably, and you could maybe uh, give your input on this, but I would imagine with the way that you do your seeds, where you're starting them under sunlight, they're getting fresh, direct air, dry mm -hmm. air every day. They kind of, they're, they're kind of almost starting off from a bit more of a harder and stronger place yeah and they're and more I, they're more acclimated to yeah. then potting up to the next size so i'll take uh, well this pot is about ready to to pot up okay so i'll take all of these and i'll pot them up to the two inch size <clears throat> then i'll grow them into two inch until they're big enough and it to, would to i know it, three it, there's no pat like cookie cutter answer but generally on average how often like how long do you see it's staying in this two inch pot before it goes into the next size up. Depends on how lazy I am. <laughs> okay, that's a good answer. So it, um, if I were to go on a timely fashion, probably one good growing season for most of the plants. Okay. There's some things that are really slow, slow. growing, Areocarpus for one, sure. they're gonna take three or four years sure. the way that I grow things. I don't fertilize heavily. I mean, there are people that fertilize every watering. I may fertilize three times a year really yeah okay is so, there any particular reason why you do that or yeah i just don't want them to get an abnormal growth so you like things to look more more natural yeah, yeah yeah okay so I'll, I'll maybe fertilize the first of the month in april may june or may june july something okay, like that very cool at what point would you give seedlings their first taste of fertilizer uh not till they go into the two inch pots okay and then just very seldom. Yeah, so at that um, size pot, I would do a half strength okay. fertilizer. Are you using like a uh, injector, like a dositron system mm -hmm. to water? Yeah. Okay. I forget which one it is. I've tried two of them. One of them crapped out pretty, pretty early on. The other one has lasted much longer. And what about <laughs> your water? Like, do you acidify your water or do you nope. have to tinker with it at all? No, I'll, I'll acidify the soil some with uh, gypsum, little sulfur okay. in there, but I don't acidify the water. Do you know what your water pH is at? No, I'm afraid to look. What things have you found do not work for you here? Uh, I can't grow a lot of the coastal California stuff. So Dudley is, I'm pretty much out of those. So okay. like, like I said, I could grow the Saxosa Colomi because it is native to central Arizona and it can tolerate the, the higher temperatures. Right. It tends to go dormant in the summertime. So I just kind of watch it and back off on the watering. And uh, what is your, you have, I like to ask this and I never get an answer, but I'm curious. What do you have like a favorite genera or thing that you like to focus on? Uh, yeah, I love agaves, obviously. Um, astrophytums in the way of cactus, astrophytums, echinocerius, areocarpus, but I don't grow areocarpus that much because they're so slow and I'm so old. Um, so I kind of like the things that North American cacti. Right, yeah. which would do all do well for you here. Right. That's the whole reason, as a matter of fact, that I had to get, I got a temperature controlled setup in my office because all of the South American stuff that I was trying to grow, right. it would all pop and germinate and stuff, but in the garage in those hot days in the summer, right. you know, I'd get like 130, I'm sure, in that, you know, between the lights and the, right. and the plants. And um, Copiapoa, a lot of other kind of things like um, some columnar things that I was growing, they all kind of petered out. Right. And so now I'm doing all that mess ems and doing all that other stuff in a more cooler uh, place. Right. No heat mat, it's just the heat of the light and it's not a very strong light. And yeah. they seem to be 
really loving it. Yeah. It's interesting. So this is uh, Turbinocarpus verrecki <clears throat> subspecies, Neglectus. Neglectus. Yeah. And so what is that? What is the, do you know the etymology of that? Why it means, what, what neglectus? Neglectus, uh, it could have been overlooked for a long time in habitat, so neglected. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so you've got quite a nice uh, <clears throat> collection of astrophytums. Oh well. yeah, you wanna look yeah. at those? Right. You know? Yeah, it's like every, every form, every seed grown plant has a cultivar name. It's like, yeah, like no. This is the, I think they call this the, star shape this would be called like star shape here yeah i call that astrophyta mysterious <laughs> i call this astrophyta mysterious okay so there's only six species of astrophytums right so it's easy to collect them all right and it's easy they stay small so it's easy to collect all the the hybrids and stuff too so i love the variation in in the flecking so i like you know these types of hybrids so this is an asterius probably crossed with uh capricorn yeah um, same type of thing here. So That's this is, beautiful yeah, this is probably a super Kabuto cross with uh, Capricorn. Yeah, because you and so you would say that because of the more like angled rib here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's the two groups. There's the yellow flowers with the red centers, right. which are Asterius, Capricorn, and Coelens, and the one if you include Digitostigma in the genus astrophytum that would go in there too so for people that don't know digitostigma would also be called uh kaput medusa that's the species right yeah yeah so it was originally described as the genus digitostigma right then it was moved into astrophytum the species stayed the same as kaput medusa as a botanist do you feel like it is an astrophytum or do you feel like it's its own i've i've read three papers and i've come away with three different conclusions <laughs> yeah well done yeah I mean, um, even sometimes I swear, man, like, you know, we think we know so much about nature and the world and how things work, but I, I feel like as a species, I don't, I don't think we really do. No. I don't think we really do. No, we try to pigeonhole things and it doesn't always work. We want to just make it like easily, like, you know, catalogable and describe it. Right. But it's not, I don't think it's quite that simple. Yeah. Even with genetics, it was, it was inconclusive in, in, from what I've read, it was very, it was inconclusive. Some say yes, some say no. appreciate you I, all the times i've come out here i know we've talked about doing a video and i uh -huh. really appreciate you taking the time oh yeah what if people want to buy one of your astro items or one of the agaves you've grown or one of the books that you have written or been involved in writing uh-huh where would they go uh, i could go to www.star-nursery.com and you don't have to remember that it'll be in the description below so you can just click <laughs> that and go right to it well thank you guys for watching the video until the next time see you guys later thanks hunter